Aoife's feature on kids the other day got me thinking, I'm really not getting any younger. There are grey hairs in my beard, my metabolism has slowed enough to give me a beer gut, and I'm telling you these things as if there's somehow more compelling evidence for the fact I'm ageing than the linear nature of time. Temporal physics aside, what I'm getting at here is, if I want kids, then I should probably start considering my state of readiness fairly soon. Only thing is, that sounded like work, so instead I just collated everything I knew about children from my experiences in video games, then tried matching those suppositions against the real-life experiences of my colleagues who actually have children. So without any further ado, here's what video games have taught me about parenting. Number one, it's important to feed your children. I've been playing Shelter 2 recently and it's really enjoyable, but I'm finding it hard to shake the feeling all I do is find food for my children. I mean, don't get me wrong, chasing after rabbits and deer is fun in its own right, but if I eat it all for myself, they start whining and won't stop until I let them have a go. After an hour or two, I started to get the impression food was somehow important to them. But those are animals. Is the same true of human babies? Let's ask our panel of expert child havers. That... yeah, that... Feeding them, keeping them alive, that, that tallies. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a big part of the job is definitely is, is feeding. Yes, as suspected, human children are not unlike lynx cubs in that they require food to live. It is important to feed your children. Number two, children are impervious to damage, so that's good. I gotta admit, it's kind of nice. If there's one thing I know, it's that children are definitely impervious to damage. This is useful because apparently I'm going to be spending a lot of time finding things for them to eat and not having to worry about their physical safety at the same time is a big weight off my mind. The only thing is, I'm not entirely sure when that whole flame doesn't hurt me thing wears off, so I asked our friendly fathers when their children stopped being invincible. I'm not sure that it ever fire. So fire damage is a tricky one, um, but what I would say, in all seriousness, is when you, when you first receive your children, what, surprises, what surprised me about them was how robust they are. Fire? Yeah. I don't think that ever... I don't think they, they are. But I think fire damage, fall damage, definitely a problem. Um, the big damages still apply, definitely. Bit of a disappointment for me there, I'm not going to lie. I had a lot of cool things planned for all that time I was going to spend not looking after the physical safety of my children. I'm pretty sure this next one's on the money, though. Number three, don't lend your children to other people, otherwise they'll come back weird. So in Crusader Kings 2, you can send your kids off to be someone's ward, meaning someone else has to feed it and educate it, and apparently stop it from catching fire, since that is a thing after all. The only problem with that is they start picking up traits from their guardian. If you ship them off to another country, their entire cultural being can change, or they can be held hostage, which is pretty awful. To be honest, shipping my kid off to someone else for a bit is starting to sound like a bit of a mixed bag, so how do our resident people with offspring handle it when they need to promise their kids into servitude? So, um, my daughter is very infre infrequently a political hostage, but she does come back from nursery with other children's socks, sometimes? Which is kind of the same thing, is that like a, like a, yeah, that, is that, does that marry up? There are laws stopping you sending your, your kid away. You can't just pack them off overseas. No, if you can like, lend them to somebody. You, there are, you can't just give your kid, to, you can't just do that. Oh, okay, then sending your kid off to be a potential hostage apparently isn't much of a concern these days. Nor is it especially legal. Good to know. Number four, shut up children. I think the most striking thing video games have taught me about children is that they very rarely have anything interesting to say, and even when they do, they generally make it sound stupid. I'm strong and quick and can do any chore you want. Come on, adopt me. See, there was nothing in that sentence that was remotely interesting or engaging. But maybe that's just a problem with technical limitations. Maybe real life kids are little tiny fonts of wisdom. I mean, the parents are saving loads on not having to make 3D models or render out realistic textures, so surely they've got budget left over for decent voice talent. How good is the dialogue from my colleagues' kids anyway? Uh, terrible. Really terrible. But very enthusiastic. No, I've trained my kids not to talk at all. <laughs> So as in the classic video game thing, an inability to act married to absolute willingness to act right now. So yeah, bad but very 
very forthright. They occasionally say useful things like, I love you. Okay, so yes, granted, I'm probably not ready to be a father just yet, but hey, I'm learning. I mean, now I know they aren't naturally flame resistant. Force Rudolph!